Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices by the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Muslim Shah, and joining me is my co host, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Today's topic will be mutahharat, the things that actually purify Najasat. Sheikh, what is the actual meaning of mutahharat and how many of them are there? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. There are actually eleven types of purifiers, mutahharat, and um, their task is to actually purify whatever becomes najis and impure. And as I've mentioned, this is to do with uh, purifying in um, the, the religious and sharia things. So it's it's not actually like a hygiene issue because hygiene is different than tathir and making something pure. Mm -hmm. These purifications are for the purpose of us allowing us to enter into the salah and pray prayers and be able to uh, fast, be able to go to hajj and so forth. And uh, the first of the mutahharat and purifiers is water. Ahsan. As we know, water is the source of life. As the Holy Quran states, Everything we made alive by the water. So the water is the source of, of life. The water is the source of living for all creatures, not only the human beings. So the first type of mutahirat and purifiers is water. And of course, um, it's classified as the mutlaq and mudaf. Okay. Now, the mutlaq is the water in which is pure and natural. In other words, the stream waters, rivers, the sea itself, rain water, and so forth. That running water that we use every day from the taps of our sinks and bathrooms. So to be able to purify something, you have to make sure that this type of water is used, which is pure mm -hmm. and mutlaq. Now the second type of water is the mudaf, okay. which means um, mixed water. Now either it's extracted from the juice, the um, the liquids from the juice, so by extracting the, um, for example, from the orange juice or, or the apple juice and so forth. You cannot actually make yourself pure and tahir from the najis with a cup of apple or orange juice. That won't make the najis pure. Also, uh, the water which was mixed with something else, water and soil which mm -hmm. becomes mud, water and lemon, which makes it lemonade, for example. You cannot actually use these types of waters or liquids to purify your najasa. So a question here then, when we have clothes which are najis, and we say to ourselves, we'll just throw them in the washing machine. Now the washing machine is a mixture of water and soap or detergent. So even though the clothes would be clean, can we consider them to be tahir? There are different opinions with the ulama um, with regard to purifying the clothes inside the washing machine. And for example, one of the ulama says that you have to initially apply rinse to the washing, washing machine to actually rinse and clean the najasa mm -hmm. first. And then you apply the, the detergents and so forth to actually uh, wash the clothes. Some others might, might say that, no, you can actually just pour it inside the um, washing machine and allow it to wash. And it actually will um, 
drain the water two or three times. So that process will actually make the clothes dahir and clean. I said, uh, what about, for example, if they, I have a piece of, uh, I've got my jacket, there's some blood on it, I get a sponge with fairy in water and I'm rubbing it like this. Is that going to make it tahir? Because I'm using wa mudaf water, water mixed with fairy liquid, and I rub it onto my jacket. That will actually spread the najasa more and more. Oh, wow. Because you have the mudaf now, and excess water uh, w with something else, with the liquid fairy or anything else, or with soap, for example. Um, you must make sure that you have only pure water to purify your najasa, out of the clothes or body or anything else. Um, without the pure water, we cannot have something uh, najis becoming tahir and pure. Awesome. Just to add more points with regard to the mutlaq and mudaf, um, it is important to also note that the one cannot actually use the mudaf water, let's say uh, rose water for example, to do ghusl or wudu. This is not called water, it's rose water, it's an orange juice, it's a mud, for example. It's water with soil, for example. So we cannot actually use them to do wudu and to do the ghusl wajib. Um, so it's important that we actually uh, know these things to avoid any kind of... So what about water which is scented? So, because we know to wear athar is um, mustahab. So somebody might think, oh, do you know what? I'm going to add a, a couple of drops of uh, or some sort of nice fragrance to the water. And when I do my wudu, I can do my wudu and spread the nice smell around my body, killing two birds with one stone. Is that wudu actually acceptable or not? The thing is, if that rose or that perfume overrides the water's uh, purity then it, the, as, a, as, as a pure water, then it actually make, makes it uh, mudaf, mixed water, and you can't use it. So it depends if the subject has changed from water to rose water, or perfume water, for example. Mm -hmm. Then that will actually make it a mudaf water, and you cannot use it for wudu, and oh. so forth. It depends, really. If it's really just a one or two drops, and, and the water's quantity is quite, uh, large. quite large, then that's a different issue. Otherwise, we cannot use it. Okay, so Sheikh, you're discussing how water we can use water to purify um, items, but what if the water itself is nejis? How do we purify water? If that water uh, became nejis, then we can actually purify it by opening, for example, a running water on it, a tap for tap water, for example, mm -hmm. and allowing. Um, the change of the najasa because there are three things that, that makes the water najis if the smell changes mm -hmm. and if the taste changes and if the color changes if they actually happen to water then the best thing is to actually make uh, water to run on that cup or pond or whatever else that water and allowing to water change Okay. And the, by the time it changes to pure water, then you can actually use it. So the only way to actually change uh, not just water is to add more water to it until the najasa is no longer seen, whether exactly. it be a change in color, change in smell, exactly. change in taste. Exactly, yes. What about um, water from the well? As we know, back then they had wells. Even to this day, I know my family back home in Pakistan, we have wells. What if the well was to become najis? If something was to fall in it, fall into it. For example, uh, a dead uh, animal such as a, a pigeon or a rat or a dog, something like that. That well now has become ninjas. Um, obviously, depending on the water size. But let's say it was Khalil water. How do you purify the well? As long as that well has a source of water coming in, flowing in from the deep ground, then the well will remain tahir and like a running water. Unless the water changes the taste, um, the color, or the smell. If they change in that water, then it makes the whole water nudges and you have to wait until the new flow of water comes in and purifies the well. And then you can actually consume and use it. 
So, Sheikhna, um, another method of purification. The second one is the earth. The earth, again, is uh, another type of and source of purifying the najis. And as the Prophet said, جُعِدَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضِ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا The earth became, became for me as a source of sajda and worship mm -hmm. and as a source of purification as well and mm -hmm. tahura. Now, with regard to the earth, um, the ground itself, the earth itself will, will make tahir the soles of the feet okay. and the shoes when they became najis. So let's say, for instance, somebody walks on the earth suddenly najasa and something impure touches and sticks on his foot yes. or the shoes. Now, there are three conditions to actually be able to purify that najis substance uh, from the foot or from the shoes. Number one, that the ground is tahir. Mm -hmm. You want to make your foot or shoes pure tahir. You have to make sure that the, the ground that you're going to walk on is actually tahir. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. So you don't just keep walking on the najis yes. uh, uh, earth. Number two, that the ground is dry. That's important as well. Because mm -hmm. the, moist, the moisture and the wetness of the ground will again uh, make the feet najis again and again. Okay. So you just keep doing the najis. So you're just spreading the najis more and more. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that the ground is, is dry as well. And the third condition is that the, the najas itself, be it blood or urine or anything else, um, must be removed from the feet or mm -hmm. from the shoes. So basically by walking a few steps, that najas should have been removed from your foot or from okay. your shoes. So eventually, to make it tahir and pure um, by walking a few steps, that najasa should have been removed from the foot or, or, or the shoes and ends up being tahir. Okay, Sheikh, but can we use this method for other types of najasa? So, example, um, najasa on my jeans, najasa on my jacket, najasa on my hands, can I rub it onto the earth and, and it is tahir? This type of purification of earth is specifically for the shoes and, f and the feet. So, okay, so the bare feet you cannot and actually the shoes. Yes, use it for anything else. Um, it was actually discussed that if the tires of the car, for example, uh -huh. might also apply the, sa the same and similar uh, rule. Yes. But you cannot actually uh, rub your hands or your head or your forehead mm -hmm. or your clothes with a bit of uh, dust or, or, or soil to actually make it tahir you have to go back to the water to okay. purify it and the earth that we're discussing here is this natural earth i mean living in the west we have pavements made out of, of clay paves and we've got tar for roads can we uh, use that for uh, purifying our feet and our shoes or is it only natural earth yes the ground should be uh, soil or rock and such like natural in other words we cannot actually use the carpet or the rug or the grass for example um, or anything vegetation grown to make our foot or shoes tahir mm -hmm. by working walking on them so they have to be mainly what is known as earth arb. just to add to the uh, previous question you asked about purifying by earth also cement uh, brick and chalk they also have the same capability of purifying uh -huh. the foot and the shoes as well so we can actually use them let's say you have a, a, a ground filled with bricks or chalks for example you can walk on it and it actually purifies your, your foot Sheikhna um You've said uh, walking on the earth, rocks, cement, um, chalk and such like will purify the, the shoes and, and the sole of the feet. But in the West, we have a lot of wood grounds that have wooden floorings, 
especially in uh, in schools and in, in traditional Western architecture, they've used wooden floorings. Would that purify the shoes and, and the soles of the feet? As an obligatory precaution, it is best to avoid walking on the wooden floor, especially the ones which are treated by, by glossy paint or, and so mm -hmm. forth. So, no, we, we cannot actually use it. So the best thing is to avoid walking on uh, wooden floor to purify our, our shoes or feet. And how does the earth actually purify the, the soles of the feet or the shoes? I mean, how many steps do we have to take uh, for it to actually uh, remove the Najasat? It's preferred for the one to walk about 15 steps or more. And um, even if the Najasat itself went away and off the feet or shoes by the very first steps, but you have to keep walking 15 steps or more and that will actually inshallah make the, uh, the shoes or the foot uh, at the end of the day uh, tahir. What if after 15 steps the najasa is still there? What if it's a very, you you this is very difficult, it's very tough? You have to continue walking okay. until the najasa is removed and then you can actually have the, the foot tahir. Are you actually allowed to physically remove it yourself? So take yes, off the shoe, yes. use something to take yeah, it you off. You can just rub a scratch on the, on yeah, the floor on and, and that's it. You yeah. know, and then put it back on and then walk and then 15 walk, steps. That's it, yeah. Yes. And it becomes Tahir, inshallah. Asantum. Okay, Shaykhna, what about if the actual earth itself is Najis? Uh, how do we purify that? Let's say someone just slaughtered a cow, all the blood is all over the road. How do we purify that? Well, if naturally uh, the sky rained and the rain washed away the blood and removed the Najasid then it becomes Tahir and pure. Otherwise, uh, you have to open running water on the ground and you try to actually wash away the blood and the actual the najas itself should be removed from the ground and that will make it eventually uh, that ground tahir and I mean you can even walk barefoot even if it's the ground is wet but as long as the najas has been removed away and again I mentioned this, uh, the rule that um, Everything is tahir, is, is pure. So wherever, wherever you go, any ground you see, um, on earth you walk, anywhere, as I've mentioned, even the bathroom grounds, mm -hmm. they are tahir, pure, unless you see yourself najasa, you're certain, or somebody who you trust would, would tell you that uh, this place it's was najis. najis. And then you have to avoid it, otherwise everything is tahir, unless you're certain that it's najis. Thank you very much, Sheikh Nahasantum. Thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Ahkam SOS. And if you have any questions that you'd like to direct towards the show and get the Sheikhna to answer, please email us on the details provided. Until next time, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.